Looks like, oh, looks like we're live. Hello. All right, yeah, I, I, a minute uh, a minute late. So apologies for, for all of you guys who are waiting. Um, and, uh, but we are live now. It's Antonio with New Grad Optometry. I am here with my good friend, uh, Dr. Jennifer Lyerly. Um, many of you probably have heard of her, know her. Uh, she's an absolute all-star. Uh, so definitely, um, you know, check her out, uh, when you guys have a chance, she does all kinds of stuff and she's knowledgeable on all kinds of topics. Uh, we'll give you a little, um, place to, to go, you know, follow her later. Actually, let's just do it now. Jen, where's the best place that people can, you know, uh, find out about some of the stuff you're doing? Yeah. So I guess probably the easiest place to find me is on Instagram right now. I'm at idolatry, E-Y-E dot d-o-l-a-t-r-y and at defocus media that's the podcast that i do with uh, dr daryl glover um, who also is a transitions change agent so we talk a lot about obstacle but also a lot about just optometry in general um so yeah hang out with me there but uh, you know i kind of fun doing this Antonio, because i feel like we're going back to the beginning your original uh team one when it came yep. to positions and they uh, working with uh, younger doctor brand ambassadors about three years ago now, I guess. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So I was just about to say, you know, we're going to be talking all about transitions lenses, including the new transition signature lenses style colors and transitions extra active style mirrors. Uh, you know, what do you need to know about them? How are you using them in practice? What patient demographic is most excited by them? And you know, just some general prescribing tips. Um, so, you know, Jen, you kind of already mentioned it, but you've been collaborating with Transitions Optical as a change agent for years now. And that is in fact how you and I met about three to four years ago in Florida. Um, time just flies by, but um, go ahead and just give us a brief overview of how Transitions lenses have evolved over these last few years since, you know, we connected down in Florida and, you know, what, what's new and exciting now today? Well, I mean, it, the product is is totally different since we started. Back then, Transitions Extra Active was kind of like the big buzz. I think we were all excited about because having a lens that got darker outside, darker behind the car windshield, but then also had a, a really good blue blocker indoors. And that was the big thing that we were all excited about talking about as uh, younger doctors and, and younger patients. Um, and now we're able to talk about that same technology with really great indoor and outdoor protection, of course, against UV light, but also against high energy blue light. But we're talking about all these different style and fashion options that we never got to before with, you know, new colors, uh, new mirrors. And so that's really re-energized the entire brand this year. Um, and our goal of reaching younger patients, especially patients that are, are our age and talking about the benefits of the technology. Hey, it's so much easier, so much fun if I can talk about it being fashionable and stylish too. Yeah, that, that definitely, definitely hundred percent. Everything you've said, I agree with. Um, I mean, I'm going to agree with you no matter what, because, you know, if, if anyone knows this topic, it is you hands down. Um, but uh, if, if anyone has any questions, anyone who's uh, watching live, I know there's a several of you, actually quite a few of you. Um, if you have any questions, just feel free to type them in the chat box there and uh, we'll be sure to answer them. So um, continuing, uh, so let's talk about the new transition style colors first. Um, you know, what are the new options? And, uh, you know, we'll talk about the mirrors, transition style mirrors, um, you know, particularly when do you recommend mirrors uh, and who can benefit most from mirror options. So let's just start from the beginning. Uh, transition style colors. So stock colors are on the Transitions Signature 7, which is totally clear lens indoors and fastest changing one, um, dark to clear as well, uh, then darkens, of course, outside. We've got four new colors in that platform. And so in addition to your gray, your brown, and your graphite green, which have been there for the last you know, couple of years, um, now there's emerald, amber, amethyst, and sapphire. Um, these, I mean, they're, what I love about Transition Standard 7 is really, it's a core product for everybody because it is 100% clear inside. Um, I'm wearing the emerald right now. I think it's a lot of fun. Of course, I'm in 
the exam room. So it's totally clear when I'm in the exam room. Um, but when I go outside, I've got, I'm wearing like a translucent green plastic frame. And then I've got this like nice pop of green lenses. So I think it looks really, really cool. I'm um, in a much more vibrant green than the graphite green was before. But I think just from looking at and talking to transitions, like what's selling the best, the amethyst and the sapphire, those are the two surprise big sellers, especially amethyst. I don't think they were expecting that to be taken off quite as much, but it makes sense with the Pantone color of the year being ultraviolet, like purple lenses, really big. Yeah, those are pretty rad. Um, <laughs> The uh, so when it comes to mirrors, uh, you know, what do we have there? And, you know, just prescribing tip. When do you recommend mirrors? I mean, what patients are, are asking for those? Who are you recommending those to, you know, particular patient need that kind of thing? Yeah. So the mirrors are totally different animal. They're on the transitions, extra active platform. So they're going to get a lot more dark, you know, when you're outside, which is great, because if you think about what you want with the mirrored sunglass, um, but they do have a mirrored anti-reflective coating. So even when they're they're clear indoors, you're going to have that reflection from the mirrored AR. And that mirrored AR comes standard on the lens. It's not something that you're, you're adding extra to the lens afterwards. Um, so from seeing the lenses, from interacting with the lenses and wearing them, to me, this is that's a perfect lens for someone who's doing a lot of indoors, outdoors, social events, out and about shopping on the weekend. This is for an active person, active lifestyles. If you've got a patient who's in front of the computer screen all day long, probably they're not going to win a wear a mirrored lens as their computer glasses because, you know, you're going to have that extra reflection. And that's a much better patient for traditional extra active or a signature seven lens with the new colors if they wanted something different. Um, but for me, the mirrors look, they look so sharp outside. They're the coolest looking transitions yet. And they do turn into that full flash mirror effect. Um, and they come in uh, six colors, pink, red, green, blue, gold, and silver shadow. So a lot yeah. of to choose from there. Yeah, tons of options. So that kind of raises a question. I mean, why why did Transitions Optical even bother? You know, why, why transitions? Yeah, I think, I mean, this, the transitions team does a ton of marketing research. And one of the things that they, of course, were seeing was, okay, we've got really good penetration for our baby boomer generation, um, but what's our, our, our penetration with younger generations? So millennials, like uh, you and me and Antonio, but then also the generation coming in behind us, Gen Z. I mean, they're starting to enter college years even, and, and they're wearing glasses. Um, and what they're finding is that patient demographic had, had not really worn transitions before, weren't really familiar with the technology. And what are they interested in? And uh, they're very interested in fashion. So looking at the way, how do we, we talk to them on the levels that they're interested in? We're, our generation and Generation Z behind us are really into personalizing and customizing what we're wearing. We want unique looks. We want eyewear that's specifically made for us that we get to pick and curate, just like we're getting you know, our clothes curated and our shoes curated. So um, going with colors, going with mirrors, something where you have the choice to make selections really speaks to this generation. Yeah, definitely. I mean, so, you know, we, we have all these lens options that are super stylish, um, but they, they stay true to the ocular health benefits that transitions lenses have always offered. Um, and, you know, I don't want to make this a discussion on ocular disease and get too much into science, but just briefly, you know, major health benefits of transitions lenses, because later on, uh, we'll talk some prescribing tips and, you know, this might come into play. So I think, I mean, all of us know we're as eye doctors, we know about sun protection and that's really the core idea here. Okay. All transitions lenses are 100% UV blocking. And so we are all so rehearsed at being able to talk about macular degeneration and cataract protection and uh, sun damage on the front of the eye. Right. But when we're talking to much younger people, those things seem like so far away, right? So as much as I want to connect with my 20 year old on like, well, I don't want you to get macular degeneration. That seems so far in the future. It's hard for them to connect that with their real everyday life. So what I found connects best when I'm talking to younger patients is I'm talking a lot about 
UV damage on the, the surface of the eye. And yes, maybe we're talking about more cosmetic sort of stuff, but it's impacting them in the way they look in the mirror. And while I, I want them to care about macular degeneration, if I can get them to protect their eyes from macular degeneration by protecting the cosmetics of their eyes, hey, I'm all for it. It's a battle that's worth fighting. So I, I do a lot of conversations about pinguecula, and I'll even show pictures, especially younger kids that mom says, oh, they never wear their sunglasses. Pull up a picture of a pinguecula in the exam room, and eight-year-old's going to wear some sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, yeah so, definitely. Yeah, pictures worth um, a thousand words, for sure. You know, it's a scary image. Yeah, um, for sure. And then so many patients, I'm sure you've seen this, Antonio, they'll ask me, like, my, the white of my eyes just don't seem that white. Okay, and it's usually um, just regular conjmelanosis or some mild early pinguiculas. That stuff, that's that sun damage that we can protect and talk about with sun exposure. And no, I can't reverse their conjmelanosis, but if they are concerned about it getting more prominent or darker, wearing sun protection full time now is a good approach. And then a big one is wrinkles. Okay, this is the one that I talk about all the time, especially. <laughs> I mean. Botox. It's not just for 40 year olds, 30 year olds, 20 year olds. We're getting a lot of cosmetic enhancements done right now. And it's all around wrinkle prevention because yeah. we know you can't really reverse wrinkles all that easily. Um, so think about what I tell my patients every time you step outside, you're indoors and then you step outside, walk into your car and you're fumbling in your pocketbook to get your sunglasses or whatever. But there's a few minutes in there um, where you're, you're squinting and squinting even just for a few minutes every single day, if you do that a couple times a day, like eventually that's accumulating into those wrinkles here along our forehead that are so hard to treat. So I joke with my patients when I talk about myself wearing transitions, but it's like, it's the best wrinkle cream I ever bought. Yeah, I like that. That's really good. I've even, you know, I've even heard of these Botox parties that are going on now and it's not you know, it, it's young. It's it's like twenty year olds that are going to these Botox parties. I'm old for the Botox party. <laughs> yeah, for real. So you know, and you know, what's interesting is that transitions lenses historically haven't been as popular among the younger age demographic. Um, you know, or maybe they're just not aware of the the brand as much. Um, you know, why do you believe that's been the perception? And you know, I, I think. You know, what's currently being done to attract a younger audience, I, I think that you've talked a lot about already, but, you know, what are, what is, why, why has this perception always been the case? Well, so one of the things I think has been a problem is the way transitions were branded, right? Where, who were you seeing wearing transitions lenses? Um, older people in silhouettes, right? If, if a brand yeah. you're presented with it looking old, then you think of it as that, oh, that person who wears that is this age. Um, and even just when we started, Antonio, who was the, the brand ambassador as far as a, a corporate sponsor or a, a celebrity that was, it was Tim Gunn. And I right. love Tim Gunn, like, I would watch any show that he's in, but he's not like a young millennial, you know, and he's right. Right. Set, so that it just looked a certain way. Um, one of the things that they're doing to really turn that around is investing in much younger celebrities and influencers wearing their lenses and their products. So now you think about the, the big celebrity endorsement this year, you've got um, Christian Siriano, who's a famous designer, yeah. but clearly much, much younger in demographic. Um, Coco and Breezy, who are these young sun yeah. slash eyewear designers slash fashion industry insiders. So the look in like the past few years of who's being advertised wearing the glasses, that's totally different. And the POP that you're getting in your offices to advertise lenses, I mean, everybody that's, that the models that they're hiring and they're casting, they're all really young people. One yep. other thing that I really think they're doing a great job though, young people studies show, we care more about blue light than any other generation. Um, we're actively concerned about the amount of screen time that we're doing and how, what, what are the long-term impacts? And the truth is, as eye doctors, we don't necessarily even know, like, what is the impact of a two-year-old that's been on a cell phone since they were born? I don't know yet. Yeah, we're scary to think about. Mm -hmm. So we know about blue light blocking and, and, and the potential risk that goes with blue light exposure. We're concerned about it. So we're more open to that message. And Transistance has done a good job about talking about blue light protection within their lenses. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, so I, I want to get into some prescribing tips uh, because, you know, you're the, you're the master for sure. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, you know, I know that how knowledgeable you are. We've talked about this um, just, you know, at conferences and, and in general, and you've shared so much, you know, good knowledge with me. So um, let's put you to the test. This is like a transitions challenge, so to speak. So I'm going to paint you some patient scenarios and uh you know tell me how you might go about um prescribing transitions or recommending transitions to these patients so let's just pretend that um you know you've got johnny little johnny he's uh seven years old he's in your chair and little johnny likes playing outdoors but you know naturally like all seven-year-olds he also has a cell phone an ipad and um a nintendo ds at home that he spends a lot of time on as well well, so obviously, like you just mentioned, the two reasons that I'm going to bring up to, to mom or parent that's with Johnny about why in their one pair of glasses, because I don't expect Johnny to be responsible for two pairs. I know being responsible for one pair is going to concern mom enough, um, but one pair that's protecting them indoors and outdoors. Yes, kids spend a lot more time than adults outside. So if anybody needs sun protection, it's kids. Plus, we know that their natural structures, their lens doesn't have any natural yellowing to it yet. They're more susceptible to sun damage at that age, even though the effects of sun damage are going to show up for decades later. But we need to protect now. And then two, I, I care about his eyes indoors when he's on devices for this long. And so if I can help reduce eye strain, eye fatigue, make him more comfortable, make him read a little easier, make him perform better at school because I'm keeping his eyes from getting tired, then the blue light benefits there too. As far as a specific lens that I would prescribe for this age, I mean, I, I think the transition style colors are a really great option because one thing parents always tell me that they're so concerned about is, okay, he needs glasses. We've talked about the benefits. What if he gets made fun of about wearing his glasses or he doesn't feel confident in his glasses? Kids will break or lose the glasses that they don't like, you know, within a Yeah. Day. yeah. Something happens. For sure. So, for sure. <laughs> they magically just, you know, I don't know what happened to them. They magically disappeared. Um, it's amazing how many sports injuries can happen when a kid hates their glasses. But mm -hmm. so um, what I recommend is as much as like, yeah, mom, I know you want to get involved in this. Let Johnny pick out the glasses that he wants. Make sure he likes them, because if you force something on him that he doesn't like, that he doesn't feel like he looks cool in, he's not going to wear those glasses. So if he wants to wear Rex Specs as his everyday glasses, let him wear Rex Specs, whatever yep. makes him feel cool and fun, right? Um, and then let him pick out. So, so he picked out his frames and now I'm like, okay, now pick out what color you want. I don't make any of this big rigmarole or like, oh, do you want them to change to sunglasses outside? No, don't ask that question. We are getting these lenses because we want protection. We've already believed in it. And then I let Johnny pick well, what color do you want it to be? And that, you know, again, he's having yeah. fun. He's getting to choose his own thing. Yeah, great, great. So I've got another patient coming at you now. This is your next patient, right? So you, you've you've got you know Johnny out of the out of the office, and you know you go to to Lane, you know exam room two, and here you have Melissa. So Melissa is a twenty five year old who works for a marketing agency, who also goes running on the weekends. Um, you know, what's your approach here? All right, this this is like my bread and butter patient. I wish Melissa was my patient every single time <laughs> because we're going to have just so much fun talking about eyes together and, and learning about what she does. To me, this is a perfect uh, mirror patient. And the reason why I say that active lifestyle, she's going to want high performance eyewear that also looks really, really fashion forward. So, um, you know, from from running and from doing sports, from being in and out, there's a whole lot how much more comfortable a, a lens is if it has a mirrored coating on it or if it's polarized. So that flash mirror works great with outdoor activities, um, but also marketing. She's probably doing a lot of social events. She's probably doing a lot of, of parties or meeting with clients. And when you have something that's a cool statement piece, a piece of jewelry, you know, a piece of uh, your purse, that's a, that, that's a conversation starter. Your glasses are one of the first accessories anybody ever sees before earrings, before necklace, before jewelry. So make your glasses that statement piece. Now, when she's in front of the computer, like jamming out whatever marketing data she has to do, I want her to have a separate pair of computer glasses. That she's going to love so much too. But for her out and about, like do around, run everything glasses, she's going to get stopped a lot if she has some really cool mirrors on there. 
Yeah. Yeah, good. I'm liking this so far. So, you know, Melissa's feeling pretty good about what you recommended. She's off to the optical and now you're back in exam room one. And here you have um, Mrs. Jones. She's a 65 year old who is working part time now um, and babysits her grandchildren throughout the week. So, uh, I mean, Mrs. Jones, she, this is a perfect patient for me for an extractive lens. Okay. And the reason why I say that she's babysitting, she's in and outdoors a lot and she's probably driving the kids to a lot of different events and things like that. So I, I don't want her to feel like she's fumbling with multiple glasses. I want her to feel like the glasses work behind the car windshield. The glasses work when I'm outside. The glasses work when I'm inside. Um, another thing I'll oftentimes hear from adults that are taking care of young children kids love like finding glasses pulling glasses off the face like they just are always into glasses so if she's got multiple pairs that she's putting down leaving down setting aside somewhere that's how sure suddenly like it's in somebody's mouth and the temples chewed off so <laughs> one pair that is really flexible for everything that she's doing i think is great and here's this is the thing about miss jones like i think we would be wrong to assume well she's 65 she'll probably need gray or brown she she can have choices yep. If she wants to rock a mirror, let her rock a mirror. Like we need to present these same fashion forward options to all of our patients, whether they're young or old, because you can excite a person of any age if you give them options and, and style and fashion to choose from. Yeah, I love that. That's such a good tip. It really is. Um, so, you know, I, I feel like you're doing too well here, Jen. So I, I want to make this a little bit harder on you. Yeah, you're doing too well. This is I going too smooth. Antonio, or I'll have some yeah. sort of like horrible fit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so now, so now I'm going to pretend to be your patient. And, uh, you know, I want to hear how you're going to talk to me about transitions lenses. And I'm going to put you in some, you know, some tougher scenarios. Um, that you probably also face in practice, you know, with some other patients. And, you know, so, you know, you know me, I, you know, I'm 31 years old and I spend a lot of time in front of the computer and I am active on the weekends as well. Um, so kind of, I guess, very similar to patient Melissa that you had talked to before, but, you know, this time I'm going to tell you, uh, you know, transition lenses, I've never really heard of those, uh, you know, what what are those and do i really need them what are you going to tell me well i'm going to start same thing you know when i prescribe for anything i always prescribe specific for the patient lifestyle so i'm i'm going to ask you about the kind of symptoms that you're having so you mentioned you're on the computer a lot you know we're going to talk specifically about how do you guys feel at the end of the day are, do you feel tired? Are you feeling any pain or, or pulling sensation behind the eyes? Are you feeling really light sensitive? Are you having trouble with your vision coming and going? Like you feel like you have a harder time seeing at the end of the day than you do at the beginning of the day. Those are all symptoms that I'm teasing out to find digital eye strain. Okay? Yeah, yes to all of the above, for sure. <laughs> so as soon as I've nailed down, hey, you have these problems that I know are digital eye strain, then well, we need to prescribe a solution, right? And so mm -hmm. that's where the blue light protection conversation comes in so naturally. I don't, uh, just the way I do it, there's no right or wrong, but I would let you tell me your problems first and then I present the solution, which in this case, because you said yes to all of those things. All right, well, we need to protect your eyes from blue light because that computer is really getting to you. You've got all the classic symptoms of someone who is getting way too much eye strain from the devices that they're using. So our blue light protection options, right? Transitions works perfectly with this because you don't have to sit behind. And I always like to pick on gunner lenses. Like I was like, I'm sure you've seen those yellow glasses that people yeah. wear where they're just yellow all the time. Nobody likes I have, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so wouldn't you rather get protection but your glasses were clear? <laughs> and I, I would, I would, definitely. Great, so that's transitions lenses. They're gonna be totally crystal clear when you're sitting in front of your computer, but they're protecting you from blue light, blue light at the same time. So they're 20% blue blocker with transition signature seven, just for everybody's information. Um, but then when you're outside, hey, you don't have to fumble and switch for your sunglasses. They're immediately gonna turn into um, sunglasses for you to protect your eyes from those changing light levels. So when you're driving home, you've got that oncoming glare coming in, you're gonna get a little bit of tint and protection from that. Wow. So you're going to squint and okay. like we we're talking about going out and about your active lifestyle. Let's pick out a color that's going to look really great. And these cool frames that you picked out. 
Oh, okay. So, so you, you know, uh, I'm sold now, you know, transitions. Uh, okay. This seems like a good thing. You know, I, I, I think I'm liking what I'm hearing and, you know, but I thought that, you know, these were lenses for mainly older people. Yeah. Um, so here, this is, this is the beauty of you as a doctor wearing the lenses, right? Especially if you're a young doctor, because when I, my patients say this to me all the time, I'm like, oh, I'm wearing them right now. Oh. <laughs> I love that. Easy conversation started, right? So I'll take them off and show them and they're like, oh, wow, these are traces. And I'm like, yeah, see, they're totally clear. Don't they look totally normal indoors? But when we go out to optical, I'll show you what color mine turn green. And so it's, you know, when you're endorsing it and you're young endorsing it, then it automatically becomes, oh, this is for a young person too. Yeah. Leading by example. Yeah. I think that's great. Well, I, if you're wearing them, then I 100% am sold at this point. So um, I'm all on board and, um, but you know, one more thing, uh, you know, I kind of like the frames that I have right now. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, can I put transition lenses into these frames or, you know, are there particular frames they can go in? What, what are, what are my options? Well, so the great thing is this lens technology works in any frame. And here's the thing, like the frame that you're wearing in Tony, I'd be like, oh my gosh, those would look killer with transitions lenses. Absolutely. Right. But I'm not above if, if a patient has a frame that's in bad shape or I can tell like, okay, someone's gonna, they've got really small, like rectangular cat eye frames. I might tell them, hey, yeah, we can put those lenses into those frames, but I actually think you'll find they'll look even better if we try something with a little bit of different styling to them. Because what I want to avoid is that patient who they get their lenses and then they go out into the real world and someone says something bad, right? Like yeah. someone oh, you look, those glasses make you look old. Okay. It's not, we know right now, if a patient gets that feedback, it's because of the frame, right? Not because of the lens technology. So to help kind of have those style conversations as the doctor, if you see someone with like 10 year old, small rectangular glasses, like there's no lens that's going to look great in that. Right. We need yeah. to make their look all around. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And this leads right into the next thing I really wanted to talk about. And you kind of already kind of touched on this just literally right now. But, you know, fashion, you know, the great thing about this is fashion. Um, and, you know, it let, and you mentioned this earlier that it really allows us to take customization and eyewear to a whole nother level. So, you know, you're pretty fashionable, very fashionable. Oh, yeah. So, I'm you know, for I'm sure. Like for sure. Woman. <laughs> <laughs> so what, you know, what are some of your favorite combinations and when, you, you know, do you even recommend colors to patients or you just always let them choose, you know? So, you know, I just want to get in, you know, I want to pick your brain about style right now and customization, you know, what, what are some combos that you, that you offer to patients or, you know, throw out there? I really love, so my, my two biggest style advice, um, I'm all about monochromatic right now so if a, a patient is really into a green frame or a blue frame or you know like a certain color frame matching the frame to lens when it goes outside that looks amazing looks so so good so i encourage my patients to play with color we have a lot of frame lines in our office that kind of resonate off of that that have a ton of color in them even if it's if you just see okay they have a black frame or a tortoise frame on the front but the temple has a color all right blue temple match a blue lens in there. That's going to be a really nice pop. Um, and then metallics. Okay. If they are picking out a gold metal or a, a silver metal or something like that, that is the perfect time to do the flash mirror because nothing looks as sharp as a, a frame with a gold metal accent or a, a gold metal um, reflective sheen to it. And then the lenses turn gold outside too. Um, but also contrasting colors, like a blue mirror in a gold frame that looks really, really nice. As oh, well. that's a killer combo. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So like your frame, I think it's got like a little bit of silver accents. Yep. In it. So like you could totally pull off a blue or a green mirror in that or that silver shadow mirror. It's going to bring out those metallic accents that are already in the frame. Um, I'm on it. You've <laughs> got me convinced. I, I told you I'm convinced I'm on it. Um, so great. And, um, you know, one one last thing I wanted to talk about, and um, these kind of go hand in hand. Um, how, you know, has being an advocate for transitions lenses really helped your practice? And um, how can someone get involved as a transitions change agent? And um, I guess these kind of go hand in hand, but why should they get involved? 
Yeah. Well, so obviously before I started working with transitions, I had never worn them in my own glasses. I really didn't talk to patients much about them. So it totally revolutionized how I thought about the product, but much bigger than that, it's the, the doctors that I've gotten to meet, doctors like you, doctors like a lot of the change dates, but also some of the older doctors within the transitions um, brand that have been working with the ProForm for years. Gosh, I've learned so many tips and advice just on how to run a practice, on how to help with staff, on how to top prescription from the chair, whatever product you're trying to talk about. Um, what, if, even talking about disease, like the words of wisdom that I picked up from it, being around doctors who are actively thinking about how to build and grow their practice, how to build and grow their optical, has been just totally priceless. Um, and so this entire body of people I've been able to work with and meet within the organization has completely changed um, my life, actually. So yeah. I know, to be honest, uh, I yeah. Yeah, well, I, I, I 100% can agree with that. And, you know, like, like we said before, that's exactly how I met you. And, you know, uh, meeting you was was an, you know, a great, 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 you know, just experience for me. And I'm so happy we became friends. And, you know, I've got so many friends from, from when we were working together. And, you know, Dr. Gerald Glover, um, another all star, you guys got to check him out. Him and Jen work very closely together, Defocus Media, check them out. Um, so yeah, for sure. That is definitely probably the best thing uh, yeah. about getting involved. What's cool is every year, you know, like, it's not like, oh, it's just, these are the change agents. They were from three years ago and they'll be there forever. But like every year, more people are joining, more people are moving on to do other things in their lives. So it's constantly, you're constantly meeting new people and meeting new people, um, to collaborate with or build friendships with, or, or build a professional relationship with. So, um, if you are interested in signing up and getting involved, you just go to trade.transitions.com slash change agent. And they are selecting change agents for next year, like right now. So uh, if you guys are interested in hanging out with me uh, and, uh, and a ton of other really cool and fun people in Florida in February, then you should sign up. <laughs> it doesn't get any better than that. And those are some pretty cool people. So uh, definitely look into it. I, I highly recommend it. Um, and um, it's been fun, Jen. It always is a pleasure, always my pleasure. So um, if anyone needs to contact me, you guys obviously know where to reach me. Uh, but one more time, Jen, best place to contact you. Yeah, hang out with me. Uh, Instagram is probably the easiest place, at idolatry and at defocus media. I'm like doing both of them. So go ahead and message me on either one. <laughs> All right, Jen. Thanks a bunch for joining. And uh, we'll do this again soon. Yeah, absolutely. Bye, Tanya. Take care.